Hi guys, Anna is here and in this video we're going to go through everything you need to know for epigenetics for your biology A level. So grab a piece of paper and so you can draw along with me and without further ado, let's get into it. So epigenetics is a brilliant topic, very interesting, very hot topic in scientific world. However, it seems to be really overcomplicated at A level and hopefully this video will just simplify and make it much easier for you. So epigenetics as the main topic. But before we can jump into it, we actually need to talk about the principle of gene expression. So gene expression is a process where the gene is used to make a functional product, such as, for example, protein. It could still be, uh, you know, tRNA or RNA. But for the purpose of this topic, we're interested of how gene expression is used to make a protein. So if we start with the gene, that will be obviously we find in the DNA. So gene is a section of DNA that codes for a particular protein. So gene then will be transcribed into mRNA, and then that will be made into a protein, okay? And the process that regulate this is obviously transcription that you guys can check the link above. And then mRNA will be translated into a protein. So together, transcription and translation, they both make up the process of gene expression. So we started with the gene and then we ended up with a functional product, e.g. a protein in this case. And the way it's linked to epigenetics, guys, is that epigenetics, it affects transcription. And now we're going to see how epigenetics affects transcription and i.e. results in the different gene expression levels. So what is epigenetics? Epigenetics are the chemical changes that happen to the DNA structure without changing the order of the basis. Remember guys, mutation is, is a change to the order of the DNA basis that will result in the different protein potentially and result into the changes to the phenotype. But in this case, epigenetics are, basically refers to any chemical changes, but actually it doesn't change the order of the base sequence. And we're gonna see now how is that possible. So you need to be aware of two different types of epigenetic modifications. One is methylation and another one is acetylation. And that's it. So let's jump onto methylation first. Okay, so methylation is a type of a chemical change that can be added to either cytosines or adenines. And a methyl group is just a CH3, so we can refer to it like that. Uh, if you're not chemist, don't worry, guys, but CH3, you should remember it from your GCCs. And just know that you can either add it to cytosines or adenine nitrogenous bases of the DNA. So let's draw a random se sequence of DNA. We're going to draw two complementary strands, and I'm going to make it very simple and short, and I'm not going to even bother drawing the complementary strand, just kind of to mark it there. So imagine this is the DNA, and we're going to be adding now extra methyl groups to it. And this happens by the enzyme called methyl transferase. Okay, so it only happens to either adenines or the cytosines. Let's copy it over and see how it now is going to affect transcription. So what you guys should remember for transcription is before a certain part of DNA can be transcribed, uh, DNA helicase needs to uh, break the hydrogen bonds and separate that. So that's what I'm gonna represent in this diagram here. So you can see that now the two strands uh, have uh, br no hydrogen bonds, okay? And the second enzyme that comes in is RNA polymerase, which normally synthesizes a messenger RNA from the DNA. However, RNA polymerase is an enzyme, which means that it has a uh, active site, which in this case, the, should be complementary to a DNA, which is a substrate in this case. However, we have just added extra methyl groups, should, should, which should probably technically not be there for transcription. So that means that the DNA becomes less accessible for RNA polymerase to bind. Well, if DNA is less accessible for RNA polymerase to bind, and specifically to the promoter sequence. So this means that the transcription rate will decrease. And this guys works vice versa. So let's summarize it for you in a nice flow chart. So let's say, so there is going to be an increase in methylation on specifically on uh, cytosines and adenines, okay? 
And then that means that the DNA will become less accessible for RNA polymerase to bind, resulting in the decrease of transcription in the cell. So that means that there'll be less transcription, obviously hence less translation, and there will be less pr protein production happening in the cell. But this can happen vice versa as well. So there could be a decrease in methylation happening on the cytosines and adenine. In this case, the DNA will be more accessible for RNA polymerase to bind, and therefore transcription will increase. And this is everything you need to know for methylation and how it changes the gene expression of DNA. Let's now look at acetylation, with, which is the second uh, type of epigenetic modification. The key thing to realize here is that methylation occurs on, specifically on the DNA, and we're modifying DNA in that sense. However, acetylation occurs on the histones. So as a reminder, histones, they are positively charged proteins. They have kind of this spherical structure, which we can discuss in a different video, but it's not important for this one, and you don't need to know that for A-level. But basically the purpose of it is to wrap around long DNA that we find in the nucleus, as DNA is negatively charged and the histones are positively charged. And acetylation group in particular is a negatively charged group, uh, as I've drawn here. You guys don't need to know about the structure of it, but just appreciate that it's a negatively charged group, which we'll refer to as AC minus. So let's look what happens now. If we have a positively charged histone, and we're going to add loads of acetyl groups to it, well, histones will become less positive. Okay, please do not say more negative because, <laughs> you know, histones are positively charged. So the more correct way to say that is less positive. Okay, and basically what happens is if suddenly histones are going to be less positive, then it means that the DNA will be less wrapped around the histones, less condensed, and therefore DNA becomes more accessible. If it's more accessible, that RNA polymerase can come and bind to it, and the rate of transcription will increase. So this is the summary of acetylation in this case. So let's draw a nice flow chart to summarize this. So increase in acetylation on the histones will result in the histones becoming less positive. So the DNA will be less wrapped around it and therefore making it more accessible for RNA polymerase to come and transcribe parts of the DNA, and so therefore the transcription will go up, okay? So I would use this as a model answer, and it's kind of a nice flow chart to kind of break it up a little bit as well. So it usually would be like a two or a three marker in exam. And then let's just kind of do the opposite of this. So just a, a short summary. So, okay, so decrease in acetylation on histones will make histones more positive. So it will be wrapped around, so DNA will be wrapped more around the histones and it will become, so it will become less accessible for RNA polymerase to bind, dec decreasing the rate of transcription. And that's guys, everything you need to know for epigenetics for your A-level. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, give it a thumbs up and let me know what you want to see in my next video. I'm happy to do any topics and subscribe to the channel. Good luck with any upcoming exams and see you in my next video. Goodbye.